So I pre-dissected my flaps. I, I do a laterally based flaps um, basically to take advantage of covering the exposed bone at the end. Um, may not look like I've done anything, but actually these are the flaps right here. One on this side. And one up here. And so where these incisions are, <clears throat> Obviously, the natural one is behind the nasal lacrimal uh, duct and sac up into and joining the front portion of the middle turbinate. So I, I like to include a little portion of that right there. And you can see this is the flap here. Normally, there it is. So just to kind of give you the idea about where my incisions are. My incision is here anteriorly in the nasal maxillary buttress, not over the upper lateral cartilage. You gotta make sure you're staying on the bone there. Up underneath the nasal bones, you don't wanna be anterior where the cartilage is, otherwise your cartilage will collapse if it's not covered at the end. Um, I'd like to just stay underneath the nasal bones. And then the incision comes down to include the upper portion of the septectomy, which is naturally gonna occur at the level of the middle turbinate, uh, all the way back about five millimeters behind five millimeters behind the middle turbinate, okay? So this is where it was harvested right here, okay? The way to, the way to elevate this, this is, this, I've been doing this a long time, and this is hard, okay? So um, the, the, the kind of old school way that I originally described this back in 2009, 2010, was actually just elevating a flap here, harvesting this as a free graft, and then putting free grafts up at the end. And so that technique's been published uh, extensively. Uh, there's randomized controlled dot trial data on it now showing that if you cover the exposed bone, it's better than leaving it exposed. So that's important. Um, this is just a more advanced technique. It's something I perfected over the years. And the problem always is, is this area right here. This is the thinnest portion of the flap. And so it's, it's the most likely to tear. So when you first start this, um, you can try it. And then if it tears, that's okay. You just use the lateral base flap and you can use this as a free graft or take the back portion of the turbinate here and thin it out and use that as grafting over the exposed bone once you've drilled it out. So just to be um, kind of let you know what, what to do if you, if you tear it. So you elevate on both sides, on both sides. And the last thing you do is elevate up here, okay, up in the nasal vault. So that's really important. Again, this is the last thing to do because you take the tension off by elevating on the sides. And so here's the flap right here. You make the cuts ahead of time if you can. This was uh, quite a, a feat using just a caudal, but usually I'm using a, a, a needle tip bobby cautery, and I'll show an example of that tomorrow um, during the panel. And so this is the flap. And the advantage of doing this flap is that you elevate it and what you're doing is you put it down. And what that does is it exposes all this bone and this pathway using a zero degree scope to be able to just drill this out incredibly quickly. Um, and again, you know, you're, you're gonna thin out the nasal lacrimal area right here. You're gonna take the frontal floor. You're gonna take the upper septum, inner sinus septum up here eventually. Um, let me get a little better view here. Here's your limit of extension, your first olfactory feeler right there. And so here's a little cell right here. Um, so the idea here is that when I dissect with my residents, they'll open the frontal, like kind of a natural 70 degree dissection this way. And then I raise my flaps and I'm good to go. And it's very, very simple and very easy. This is a, by far the, the greatest way to do it. Hardest part about this is raising these flaps, by the way. Um, so once you've got this, you can use a zero degree scope, get in around the corner, and it's actually not really an outside in, which is basically drilling up into the frontal sinus, essentially blindly um, following the periosteum, but actually an inside out using a zero degree scope. So it's a little, little uh, variation of the technique. It's what I like to do. Um, let me show you the flap on this side. Here it is here. Our RF tried to kill it during his dissection. <laughs> All right, so now we've got both areas really exposed. So the next move is, of course, to take out the upper septum. And this is basically in the window that you're gonna make. Easy way to do this is you can kind of 
penetrate lower right here. Uh, you can use a kerosene up right there as well. Remember, you got to keep your cartilage underneath your, your nasal bones and uh, keep the support of the nose, but, but that can go. And now we've got this nice big window, right? So where we're going to go is go to periosteum, periosteum, come up here, but we've got our frontal sinuses identified, and we can do this very rapidly. So 30,000. May need the suction because I'm sure this is going to clog in two seconds with this suction power. But we could just let it fill up. So you can start drilling this area, which Richard Harvey likes to call it Carolyn's window after one of his fellows. Uh, I'm not getting any irrigation. Can you turn up that pump? There we go. You get it. Irrigation coming a little bit better. All right, that's better. So I actually will often use a cutting burr for this part because it's so rapid. This also works well, but look what I, what I can do. So here's the frontal. I can get in behind it and essentially just drill the crap out of this front part right here. And it makes it super simple. See, see this? So it can cross over. I can just drill through the floor very easily right to the front. And come cross court. Again, you got to drill that lateral stuff to kind of get your width. And get down to periosteum and suck some smoke since I'm having problems with irrigation. Let's see if I can get there. There's a little more irrigation. Great. Get this out quickly. Okay. There we go. Good. Now, get in behind here, right? And we can hug this, right? Again, super simple method. Super simple methods kind of bring this across. I'm, again, going cross-court here. And we're going to suction here in a second because I'm super clogged. Can you unclog that a little bit? See how nice and easy this is going to be? Look at that. So it's just going to come right across. Good. Sorry. Thank you, boss. So again, you can go cross court. And then essentially I could just hub this, right? We're gonna wanna get the inner sign and septum down, yada, yada. So see how quickly you can just kind of bring that floor down? This is even faster with like one of the, the 15 degree cutting burr. Of course, I don't let my residents use that just from a safety standpoint. Buried in the skull base, you know. Good. All right, so basically we've just done our draft three in like five minutes. Um, so if you've raised, raised your flaps well. Now, I do like to kind of to polish off around the corners, and I'll show you that in a second, with a angled burr. And of course, I put my flaps up with an angled, burr, angled uh, scope and all that stuff as well. Clogged again. It's okay. Good. And that's just mucosa here. So we're doing well. Great. And sometimes it, it's good to kind of stop and kind of debride the little bits in the mucosa. All right, good. All right, can I see a straight debrider, please? 
Good. So I was going to read that. Great. Perfect. All right. So what we have left, um, let's put that drill back on one more time. So I like to take this spike down. See, here's first olfactory feel on this side, first olfactory feel on this side. So you can take down this T, and above this area, you can actually take it, as long as you're above where the cribriform juts out, you can take this whole thing back to the posterior table. So I'll show you that in a second. Little bone paste. Good. All right. Now I'm going to take this down all the way to the posterior table. And I like to take this inner sign and step them down. Good. Excellent. All right. Now, I like to kind of use the uh, 70 degree scope now. This is the last move I do. And round out the corners. Give me a 70 degree cutting burr. And so now we're looking up. You can use both nostrils if you want. Bring this down just a little bit more there. And still have a little bit of this bone I can take down. Again, I call this rounding out the corners. Making sure you have a nice smooth transition here. And then I want to take the center sinus septum down all the way up. I want one cavity. There's inner, if there's septations within the frontal, take them down. You want to take them all down. One cavity. One cavity for steroid rinses. And same thing on this side. Can you unplug that? Or actually wipe that? Wipe my yeah. scope? Yeah. Great. All right. Ir irrigation in here. Just throw some irrigation in there. Yeah. No, what I mean is just pour some into the nose. It'll help get rid of some of the bone dust. See all this bone dust? Yeah. Hmm? Let's pour it in. There we go. You can't pour it in? Oh. Yeah, just like this. There we go. All right, suction. Still a lot of bone dust here. All right. Draft three. For sake of time, I am going to show you how to put the flaps up here in a second. Probably still a little bit of bone I want to get down over here. Section. There we go. All right. So let's call it right about there. Um, yeah, that'd be great. And then suction. I clean up some of the bone dust and show them what we got here. There we go. Good. Okay. So here's our draft three. But I'm going to show you um, zero degree. This is how we orient our flaps. Yeah. Remember, our flaps have been kind of hanging down on the, on the floor. And so we can cover all this bone on the side walls right here. This goes up into the frontal. And I just kind of get it up there and kind of stick it against the blood. The secretions. And then... I switch back to my 70, 70, 
and I use a frontal curette to swing them up onto the exposed bone. Yeah, that's good. All right. So we got one flap over here. And, you know, usually we're drilling pretty far up, okay? So it's a good idea to kind of have as much exposure as you can. You can, if, you, if it's a kind of a short draft three, use one of these flaps and swing it across and just go up to the nasal vault on the other side. That's also an option. Um, you want to just cover as much as you can, just like that. And then same thing on the other side. So this one got torn a little bit, RF. <laughs> Sabotage. Sabotage. I don't know. Could be as a cadaver, too. <laughs> yeah, it thinned out a little bit right here, but um, let's see here. There you go. Actually, I think it's just twisted. Good. Okay. Gravity. All right, let's move this here. And again, we want to cover as much of that bone as we can anteriorly as well. Yeah, torn right there. But you get the idea. Well, Brad, thanks for making that look easy. It's and then uh, this goes right here. And make sure you kind of bring this all the way. See, see how this covers that whole area now? And now all this is exposed with, is all covered with mucosa. And so now you're going to put um, various things here. I've tried different things over the years. Um, you can use Propel Minis. But I usually always like to put Celastic up here to cover these flaps, OK? Um, but this is a very nice technique. And you'll see like some videos and everything. like. Six, five, six weeks, like there's no, there's no exposed bone whatsoever. I mean, by two weeks in a lot of instances. So, and that's it. Awesome. Appreciate it. All mm -hmm. right. So we have about a little less than an hour.